welcome to Physics Talk episode 1. In this talk, we have the host, artificial intelligence researcher, perfect ACT score. You're not always going to be the host, Mr. Hubris. Rikos Bari and the youngest mayor and youngest professor, Professor Saborno Isaac Barry. Man, you're a hubris and uh, you have so much hubris. You you are really a bragger. You should also add bragger to your own title, Mr. Blah Blah Blah. In this episode, we're going to question each other on topics based on physics and so... Basically, all you need to know is that it's science talk except we get one minute for each response. Okay, so who wants to begin? I'll begin with the... I'll begin! Okay. Just kidding, you'll begin. Okay, are you ready for the first question? Mm, Yes. I drop a ball to the ground and the ball hits the ground. If the event E is the ball hitting the ground... Is me dropping the ball in the past light cone, the future light cone, or elsewhere of the light cone? Um, it's probably in, wait, so you dropping the ball is in the past light cone, I would believe. Oh no. Yes, that's correct, because me dropping the ball is the causation of the event, so of course it has to be in the past light cone. And it can't be elsewhere, because that's outside. You go ahead, your question. Um... Wait, I don't supposed to have questions. No, you just ask the next one. Okay. One of the ways that the Greeks knew the Earth was round. Um. Well, one of the ways was that um, they looked at the North Star. Or they looked at one of the stars in the sky at one point in Greece. Then they traveled to Egypt and saw that it was at a different position in the sky. If the Earth was flat, then they would be at the same position. So they deduced that the Earth was a sphere by using the positions of stars, along with the reasoning that if the Earth was flat, why would you first see the sail of a ship and only later its hull? Do you know the name of that star? Um, the North Star. What was the name? The North Star. Polaris. But good job. The method uh, is correct. Are you ready for the next question? Yes. What is one of the arguments against a static infinite universe? Against the static infinite universe? Um... If there was a static infinite universe, then every single thing would just collapse into a single central mass. Okay, sure. And why can't that happen? What was uh, Newton's argument against that? Uh, Why can't that happen? Well, if there was a static infinite universe, then there would be no center. But But people reasoned, people reasoned that uh, some people reason much later that you can uh, you can take that central mass and then add as many more stars as you like however many stars you add it will still get keep getting sucked into the central mass okay next question are you ready yes why was the michelson morley experiment so revolutionary for physics it's michelson morley by the way and it was revolutionary because it uh, because um it was only realized much later that its experimental results were uh, actually proved that there was no ether even though many uh, scientists and physicists at the time were like monkeys and they wanted to cling onto their branch of the ether they and so they made modifications to their theory blah 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 and also uh, the michelson morley experiment Proof that no matter from what reference frame you take, the speed of light is always the same. These physicists reformed the laws of physics so that they would work according to the michelson morley experiment. However, he didn't understand why his formulas worked. Who was this physicist and what did he do? Hendrik Lawrence. I believe he... Uh, stop smiling like that! Hendrik Lawrence. I believe he derived the Lorentz equations, and there are, um, so his name is attached to an important part of um, Einstein's theory of relativity. However, however, he had no idea how his things work. He just did things, tested them experimentally, and then he realized that they were wrong and changed them and changed them and changed them. Ad hoc experimentation. Okay, so that's partly true, but he did not do any experiments. He just tried to reform the theory to fit the experimental data. But he didn't do his own version of the Michelson Molly experiment. True. Okay, are you ready for that next and final yes! question? I was freaking born ready. We'll see about that. By the way, you answer the final question. Wow, nobody slaps an AI researcher. So Everybody you... slaps an AI researcher like you, puny. Okay, so the last question, I will give you a choice. Should Do you want me to ask about... Uh, Whatever! 
Okay, I don't so care. Yeah. Give me anything okay, you no, want. I, I just don't want to I make it too hard for you. In Hubble, determined Hubble's constant in 1929. Oh, maybe I wasn't born ready. Anyway, um, I think he determined it by measuring um the scale at which objects were red shifted, and due to the Doppler effect, those things were red shifted because they were moving rapidly away from us. And the Doppler effect states that. And the wavelength of stuff gets longer if they're moving away from you and shorter if they get closer to you. Since red is on the longer wavelength end of the visible light spectrum, he deduced that if something was red shifted, then it was moving away from us. So he deduced um, so he deduced that those galaxies were moving away from us by um, the amount of red shift they had. Okay, so let me tell you the correct answer. Oh no, How oh that means it's wrong. Hubble looked at two properties, the recessional velocity of the galaxies and their distance. And he found that the distance of the galaxies that were away from us was proportional to their receding velocities, right? So the farther away the galaxy is, the faster it's moving away from us. And how was that, uh, how were those two terms proportional? They were proportional by a constant C. That was the Hubble constant and he saw that Hubble constant was between 60 or 80 uh, but to this day uh, physicists are still arguing over what the Hubble constant really is that's why we put the JWST in his space to confirm what the Hubble's constant should really be Yay! so you got four out of five yeah, correct. Shut up! 80 percent sadly you did convert uh, convert to the next stage okay Convert? You mean advance? Yes. Looks like you need to go to a spelling bee. I'll be interviewing him on March 18. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. The Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science.